So cheers, everyone. I am coming to you with a sweet little bumblebee cup, a hazelnut latte. I should have made it iced if I knew this was the talk we were having today. If I had taken a second to comprehend my schedule, I would have made it iced, but it's a hot hazelnut latte nonetheless. Today, what I want to talk to you guys about is concepts of renewal, of growth, of transformation as we come over the spring equinox. This is such an opportunity. In fact, all of nature cycles, all of the different cycles that we go through on this planet are such beautiful opportunities for us to harness the energy that nature naturally presents us. And the spring equinox or spring at large, or even if you are in the fall equinox, like you could take this and turn it inside out, invert it, invert everything we're gonna talk about today, or you can take it and still apply it in a fall-like sense. But this is the perfect time to really harness that idea of renewal, that idea of transformation, to be aware of the transformations you just went through that you might not even be embodying or really paying mind to yet. And also to come out of your state of hibernation, to stretch and prep yourself for whatever the mountain is that you are climbing this year. And we're all climbing different mountains. And these don't have to be Everest size mountains, by the way, I don't want that to sound very toxic hustle culture, like every single year we have to be conquering mountains, but more so that every single year, whether we intend to or not, whether you're just moving with the flow of nature or you intend to actually tackle a big goal or a big life milestone, we awaken from the depths of winter, we warm ourselves up, we start taking action, we start putting in some work and we arrive at the mid-year, we arrive at summer solstice, we arrive through the summer really hitting our peak of the year and then we slowly cascade down into this fall where we can harvest all of the things that we've put forth into the year, the time, the energy, the things that we focused on and then hibernate back into a nice winter where we replenish our resources again. So if you think about that timeline, we are currently at the spring. We are awakening from our hibernation state, from our resource state and really giving ourselves or you can give yourself the chance to ask, what is my mountain this year? What am I awakening to? What wakes me up? What gets me excited? What am I pinning my focus on? Today's Coffee Talk episode is brought to you by Trumetta. If you want to start your day healthier with True Meta Mushroom Coffee, you can see for yourself how it helps you focus so that you can get stuff done. You'll feel an uptake in your productivity every time you drink it. And True Meta offers their best deal to date to all Coffee Talk listeners. You will get a free electric mixer and 40% off the coffee plus free shipping in the US if you go to truemeta.com slash coffee. That's T-R-U-M-E-T-A dot com slash coffee to fuel your productivity and creativity with some delicious mushroom coffee. Trade Coffee is here to help you make better coffee at home. If you are someone that loves coffee and likes to try different kinds, then Trade is totally going to be up your alley. You choose your coffee and then it arrives at your house and you can try it out, but then you can choose a totally different coffee the next month. So jumpstart your spring daily coffee routine by signing up for a trade subscription. Right now, Trade is offering a free bag with select subscription plans when you visit drinktrade.com slash talk. That's drinktrade.com slash talk for a free bag with select subscription plans. Drinktrade.com slash talk. Keep in mind, because I think it is so easy to get lost in the sauce of motivation. I know I do. I'm currently losing myself just a little bit in the sauce of motivation because I'm getting my first taste of that awakening, that first taste of, wow, I'm actually really feeling what I'm doing and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And I wake up excited to tackle what's on my to-do list for the day. Like it's been a little while since I have felt that way. So I fully fully get sucked into that feeling and can sometimes burn myself out too quickly. We are not at the summer solstice yet. We are still at the point of the year where sun and moon are balanced, night and day are balanced. That is what the equinox is. It is an equal balance of daylight hours to nighttime hours. So it's not about awakening and hitting the ground sprinting. It's about coming into a new state of balance, coming into or out of your relaxed dormant state where hopefully you were able to fill your cup up during those winter months 
and come into a a, a light active state or a soft active state, if that makes sense. For a lot of us, this is the perfect time to take a look at your life and ask yourself, what do you no longer need to carry? What can you spring clean both out of your physical realm and out of your spiritual or your mental realm? Like what no longer needs to be on your dream board? What no longer needs to be on your goals list? What, with the transitions and changes and growth that you've gone through, what are you ready to let go of? What are you ready to clear out that's old and bring in that's new? And again, you can do that so metaphorically. I mean, there are goals that I used to have five years ago that would just make no sense for my life now. And that's that's the beauty of growth and aging and wisdom is that you really do, you, you go for certain goals and along the way, along your life's journey, you go through transformation and change. And then you realize that there are certain things that you may have put on your list or put on your goals or assumed were right for you that you realize with time and with the change and wisdom of age, like actually that's, that's kind of old and it's just taking up dust in the closet. And I've just been holding on to it for no reason. I think I'm ready to let that go now. And then obviously we can do that very physically as well with spring cleaning our homes, such a good feeling to, to go through the closets that we've just been procrastinating or the corners of clutter or the piles or our clothes. And again, get rid of the old, make way for the new, let go of the things that you're holding on to for that just in case, or this might not fit for my life right now, but what if it fits for my life later? Like you don't need to hold on to that stuff. And it's very freeing and light to let it go and open up that space in your life again. If you're hearing this and you're like, gosh, like I really want to do that. It sounds so nice. You don't have to do it perfectly. It's just introducing some new things while just releasing your grip on things that you're ready to let go of and time and energy. It'll do its thing. You don't have to try too hard or try as hard as you might think you have to. You just have to give yourself the time and the space and the grace to notice when you're clenching and just release, especially if we're speaking of emotions and allow yourself to introduce the concept of lightness into your everyday state, into your everyday mood. It's been a goal of mine since moving and since wanting to get more in touch and in tune with nature to pay more attention to what happens naturally in the world around me and see the ways that it can mimic or symbolize the things that we go through as human beings it, it's very common for us as a race to separate ourselves from nature but we are very much made and created by nature and a very much a part of nature so the things that we see happen out in the natural world are again very common to be very symbolic to the things that we go through as human beings as well. And if you look outside in the springtime and you see, I mean, we're in a weird pocket where I live right now in the spring where everything doesn't look very pretty. It's coming out of winter and you're like, Ooh, you know, nature's looking a little rough out there. It's looking dry. It's looking brown. It's looking barren. But even that has a beauty to it. When you bring that into the symbolism of day-to-day -day life. I genuinely feel like that March spring day. I just this morning did a full everything deep pamper routine because I felt like that brown, barren, gross, dry version of myself coming out of the winter and it felt good to exfoliate. It felt good to you know give myself a sense of rebirth by just pampering myself a little bit. Uh, also too, when I think about spring, I think a lot about birds and their babies or bunnies and their babies. I'm currently pregnant, so I'm very much leaning into that like mama, that mama state that spring seems to have. But also, again, very metaphorically, what projects are you birthing, for lack of a better word, that seems so like birthing. It's, it just it seems so, it seems so aggressive, but what projects are you bringing, in, bringing to life right now in this season? What actions, what parts of yourself are you bringing to life with the spring equinox? There are so many things that you may have dreamt of, thought of, or been inspired by in the winter months. And now is such a perfect time to bring new life into your, into your life. And there's so many ways we can do that creatively, even non-metaphorically bringing new, a newness into your space, your atmosphere, changing up your hair, changing up your clothes, moving around your furniture and your house, like getting that sense of renewal, getting that sense of rebirth and that sense of, of transformation. Because again, being at the very, very beginning 
inklings of spring. Yes, things are looking brown and barren and a little bit icky coming out of winter, a little rough, a little rough coming out of winter. But it's not very long. It's only a few weeks time before everything gets as green as it can possibly be. A new earth literally pushes itself up from the ground. We get flowers reblooming. I believe it was May of last year that I had one of those moments where I almost, almost asked myself if I liked it better than October. When all of the trees start blooming flowers and everywhere you walk, it's just, it's that again that sense of newness that sense of beauty in just everyday nature there is something about that essence and of course after things bloom and they get fertilized it, we get into a really deep lush green sense of summer but before that happens when everything blooms in the spring there is something that's so beautiful about that and to know that it comes from this dry desertedness that we are in at the very beginning of spring and then to see it come into full fruition to see it come into full bloom how are you blooming in this season of your life and if you don't know take this as an opportunity how do you want to bloom if you were to bring yourself in a very non-materialistic sense but into your own full bloom what would make you feel as beautiful as that blossoming tree is it changing up your hair is it getting a few new makeup products like again i know that these sound very juvenile or like i don't know cutesy to be like oh getting a new lipstick but seriously getting a new lipstick the color of a pretty flower petal like in essence it really is allowing yourself to to turn that attention and intention that the trees have when they bloom their their blossoms to yourself and let yourself blossom as you come into spring when you think about by may how do you want to glow how do you want to blossom how do you want to move through and highlight your own beauty these are really fun questions and they're questions that can trigger a state of action and trigger a state of, of self-care or of self-pampering or again of that renewal that allows you to have that sense of new life and lean into that sense of spring. I love this season because it's it's not quite the time for dresses yet. However, it does get hot enough in my house that I can wear dresses indoors, but I do love dressing myself up. I love doing my hair. I love, I've been wearing a lot more pink makeup and these are very small, subtle things, but they are things that in their essence, in their embodiment, I feel like I'm adorning myself like a flower. <laughs> seems so corny as I'm saying it out loud. For anybody that's listening that's ever struggled with self-esteem or thinking that you're worth putting in that time effort and that care, that true intentional care for, like, I don't know. When I think about being 80 years old, okay, I imagine that version of myself, rocking it, rocking the wrinkles, rocking the gray hair, but thinking back on this version of myself and being like, girl, you are still so young. You are still so vibrant, so alive, so full of youth. Like, don't waste it away feeling like you have to dim yourself down, you know, just to just to make it feel like it's okay for you to just walk around and exist. Like you are allowed to enhance the parts of yourself that you feel are beautiful. You're allowed to feel beautiful. I'm even walking around that statement because it feels so uncomfortable for me, but it is something that I'm really, really trying to work on because I know 80 year old me sees me as beautiful. And so I want to feel that I want to give myself that permission. And I think we all should, that we all should be able to walk around feeling beautiful and do the things that make us feel beautiful and make us feel like we are in our full state of bloom. And there is absolutely nothing vain about that, or it doesn't have to be vain if you're doing it from a genuine sense of, or the genuine intention like a tree does when it blooms. It doesn't bloom and then think it's vain for rocking some flowers before, I don't know, giving you apples in the, in the fall time. It's just going through its natural cycles. It's just doing what it's meant to do. It's being what it is. And so there's something to be said there. I don't think I've said it perfectly, but I think it's worth saying. I think it's worth giving yourself the permission to feel beautiful and do whatever you want to do that's going to make you feel that way. Today's Coffee Talk episode is brought to you by Trumetta. 
It's a premium supplement company based out of California that strives to make self-care easy. And one of their amazing products is mushroom coffee. It's a must for your morning routine. It tastes so nice. It has no mushroomy aftertaste, only the benefits that the mushrooms bring. This organic premium coffee blend has lion's mane mushroom for productivity, reishi mushroom for immune support, cordyceps to boost your energy, and of course, that kick of caffeine to get you through the day. If you want to start your day healthier with True Meta Mushroom Coffee, you can see for yourself how it helps you focus so that you can get stuff done. You'll feel an uptake in your productivity every time you drink it. And True Meta offers their best deal to date to all Coffee Talk listeners. You will get a free electric mixer and 40% off the coffee plus free shipping in the US if you go to truemeta.com slash coffee. That's T-R-U-M-E-T-A dot com slash coffee to fuel your productivity and creativity with some delicious mushroom coffee. Trade Coffee is here to help you make better coffee at home. Trade brings roasted to order coffee from more than 55 of the nation's top roasters right to your doorstep. So stay tuned for a special offer to all Coffee Talk listeners in just a moment. Now, right around springtime, I like to change up everything from my day-to-day routine to even just how I'm drinking my coffee and trying out different coffees. If you are someone that loves coffee and likes to try different kinds, then trade is totally going to be up your alley. I decided to try the Dreamer decaf. It's very rich. It's very cozy and it's perfect for exactly what I needed it for, which is a late afternoon cup of coffee that isn't actually going to hit me with caffeine and keep me up too long but gives me that cozy, it's kind of got like a citrusy taste to it that can help me when I'm in my writing time. However, in a couple weeks time, I might switch up my routine again, especially with the changing seasons and might want to try a different coffee. And that's why trade is so amazing because when you go on trade, there are so many different coffees to choose from. You can choose from different tastes. Like if you want something more citrusy, if you want something more floral or something that tastes more like brown sugar, you can choose a roast level from light all of the way down to dark. You can even choose based on price or from region. You choose your coffee and then it arrives at your house and you can try it out, but then you can choose a totally different coffee the next month. So jumpstart your spring daily coffee routine by signing up for a trade subscription. Right now, trade is offering a free bag with select subscription plans when you visit drinktrade.com slash talk. That's drinktrade.com slash talk for a free bag with select subscription plans. drinktrade.com slash talk. I also feel like spring is such a fun time to introduce new hobbies. Spring feels like the hobby season. I'm pretty sure it was my sister who sent me a like hot girl, is it hot girl summer? Hot girl summer is out and granny, old granny, old girl spring. Oh my God, I'm butchering this. Hot girl summer is out. Granny girl spring is in. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I've never ever loved a statement more in my life. Bulky, weird cardigans, gardening, buying yourself flowers and clipping them in your kitchen before making yourself a nice warm tea with honey, reading a book out on your porch, (laughs) loving butterflies and bumblebees and buying binoculars to spy on the birds outside. It's in, it's in my friends, at least I am feeling that vibe entirely. I went to go buy a cardigan actually last two, three weeks ago. It was this really cute cream cardigan with knit butterflies into it. And I ended up posting to my personal Instagram being like, is this, is this cute spring or is this old granny? And I, it was like a 50, 50 shot based on how many people thought one or the other. And a bunch of people DM me being like, it's both, get it. And then I, I was wearing a completely different cardigan. I think I was wearing it in the last coffee talk, actually. It's a cloud cardigan. And I was walking around the house and it was Ryan who told me that the butterfly cardigan was a little too old granny. So I didn't buy it. He didn't mean it in a, he was laughing, but I was like, hey, you're right. And it was a little expensive. So I was like, I don't need another cardigan, girl. Put it, put it down. But I was walking around the house in a cloud cardigan that day that I filmed that coffee talk. And Ryan was looking at me funny. And I, I'm like, what? And I always get this, I get this anxiety sometimes when he's just looking at me where I'm like, he either thinks I'm so hot right now, or he thinks I am so ugly right now. (laughs) And most of the time I'm like, do I look like a troll? Do I look bad? Why are you staring at me like that? And he's like, is that the granny cardigan? 
from winners. One, no, it wasn't. It was an entirely different cardigan. And two, it made me realize I have a thing for granny cardigans and I love it. They're in. I'm not there yet, but I do know one year I will take up knitting and crocheting, 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 so that I can learn how to make my own granny cardigans. But this is the perfect season for picking up some fun hobbies. The hobby I am super into this year is gardening. I really, really cracked it open last year, but we were a late, we were too late in the season. So this year I've already started. I've just, just saw this morning that I got my first three little sprouts on all the seeds that I've planted. Gardening is it. And I'm giving myself at least 30 years to become an expert gardener. Okay. Like I want to eventually have it all. I want to make my own honey one day. I want to have a flower garden and a vegetable garden and some fruit trees, but I'm starting small. I'm, I'm just building my green thumb. And that again, it is such a fun thing because it's so earthy. It's so working with your hands and working with nature. There's so many hobbies that you can pick up this season and they're all so fun. And there's something about adding a new hobby in that still goes with that spring cleaning essence of like, what is a bad habit or what is a bad action or something that you've just been spending too much time on that you want to take out of your life? And what could you replace it with? That's a fun new hobby. That's going to introduce a new aspect of life into your day to day, whether it is gardening, maybe you want to pick up reading. Maybe you do want to pick up knitting or crocheting, or maybe there's already hobbies you have that you want to get back to like painting or content creation or makeup or hair. I, I'm, I can't, I'm, I'm certain there are so many more DIY crafts. Uh, I don't know, building things like there's so many fun hobbies and I feel like spring is a project season and projects are so fun when they come at the, they come at the intention of building up a new skill set and trying that new hobby. It's almost like playing the Sims and your little Sims bar grows, even cooking and baking. Like if you're normally not somebody that's into that thing, or even if you are like trying some new recipes, baking some lemon loaf for the springtime or anything that you feel like flavors well for spring. <sighs> I, my dopamine is so high just even talking about this right now. So let me know what hobbies you guys are into. I'm definitely into the, into the gardening this year. Once we finish our kitchen rental, I'll be back into the baking. It's been so long since I've been able to bake, but I'm very excited to get a kitchen going again. Probably won't be until like late spring, early summer, but gardening will hold my hand until then. Actually this week I'm making my own spring wreath for the front door because Lord knows I'm not about to spend 70 to $80 on a wreath for my front door. That is the price I'm seeing almost everywhere I've gone to go get a spring wreath. So I told myself I'm making myself a wreath. And when I spring cleaned my front foyer, I have some rubber boots, some old hunter boots with holes in them. And I almost threw them out, but it felt wrong. And so I went on Pinterest. I was like, what can I do with old rubber boots? And I saw these people turning their rubber boots into planters. And I'm totally going to do that and put them in my garden. So hobbies, let me know which ones you guys have been up to. There is one more essence of spring that personally, I always feel like it finds me around this time of year. And it's this idea of mindfulness or something I personally really love to learn about and study is yoga philosophy. I don't always have as much time as I'd like to to dedicate to it, so I don't know why it always seems to be the springtime, specifically early spring, that I come back to this, these philosophies and this idea of mindfulness and learning about yoga philosophy and yoga, y yoga and its in its teaching sense. The word yoga actually originally originates from meditating. Uh, if you've ever ever learned anything at all about yoga, the Yoga Sutras of Pantanjali. His, he, when he uses the word yoga in his yoga sutras, he's talking about sitting and meditating or holding asana, which is like a pose. Uh, if this, uh, if this is not your thing, that is totally fair and totally, I mean, obviously we all have our things, but there is also something about renewing your sense of faith, renewing your sense of whether you're into spirituality or you're into religion or you're into philosophies, or you just want to look at the world from a new perspective, there is always something that is so beautiful of having a renewed state of mind going into the springtime too. Now, I can only tell you what I'm into, and I feel like there is so much more power in, in a sense of community and utilizing that community to share perspectives, ideas, and corners of the world we've maybe never heard about or found yet. So. 
I'm going to ask again, if you are watching or if you're even listening, jump on over to the YouTube, Kaylin's Coffee Talk YouTube and leave a comment on this Coffee Talk about any kind of philosophies, any kind of books, any kind of new perspectives on the world that you think are worth diving into, because then it can be a really great space and resource in the comment section where you can go and pick through and see if anything kind of strikes interest in you. I have so many books still that are in my bookcase that I haven't gotten around to reading, but I always want to around this time of the year. And alongside that new state of mind, I feel like it gives almost like a fresh or cleaning off the lenses that we look at the world through. So it doesn't even have to be from reading a book if your new philosophy could literally be as simple as spending time in nature every day or any kind of mindfulness activity, anything that allows you time to do things with full intention where your mind isn't off in somewhere else, you know? Sometimes, especially if you're coming out of a very heavily saturated winter, you might not want a new book or a new philosophy or new information for the brain, maybe what you really want is open space for the brain. And the best way to get that really is walking in nature, spending time in nature or a mindfulness activity of any sort. It could be dancing. It could be sitting in meditation. It could be extra, just extra quiet time. It could be so many different things, but there is always this gentle pull. I feel this time of the year that it's almost like a beckoning to clear out the cobwebs in my brain and not just in my closet to renew my sense of values of philosophy of the things that i believe in and the actions that i move about taking on the in the world i think that when i don't sharpen that tool for myself when i don't reintroduce or re remind myself of the philosophies that I find very inspiring, the perspectives on the world that really help me keep and nurture a sense of hope, especially for the future. I think especially for our generation and living in the time that we do. It, it is a true top priority act of self-care to continue to come back to the things in your life or that you have found throughout your time living on this planet that give you a sense of hope and faith for the future and coming back to those philosophies those teachings that faith in whatever that means to you and whatever concepts those like really ring strong and true to you that bring you back to your state of values that bring you back into a state of equilibrium with yourself back into who you really feel you are and what you came to the planet to be and moving through the world through that sense of embodiment with that fresh state of mind those fresh that fresh perspective that fresh view on the world one of my interviews back in the fall i did with a practicing witch and it has stuck with me ever ever since she has spoken these words i can't unthink it i think about it at least once a week where she said we go through our maiden phase our mother phase and our crone phase and it's like the maiden is the bushy tailed youngling that is bright eyed and walking through the world and is just in that state of adventure and learning. The mother is that nurturer, that caregiver, that teacher. And again, it doesn't have to be very literal. It's like mother could be, you are the mother of your, your plants, your pets, or you're a teacher, or you're a caregiver, or you're even just caring for yourself. It's a different state of being. It's a different state for the soul. And the crone being are deeply wise our older selves, our elder selves. When I think about that through the essences of the seasons, spring feels like the maiden. Spring feels like the time to allow yourself, no matter what state of life you are fully grounded in, in your state, whether you're in the crone or the mother or, or still the maiden, you can reintroduce that bushy eye bushy-eyed bright tailed that bright-eyed bushy-eyed energy into your life again giving yourself that sense of renewal of adventure of rebirth I, again like there's so many deeply intricate ways to look at the world and to look at our our time here and our evolution here as human beings it's like a kaleidoscope every time i really try and nail it down or i pr try to put it into a human language my brain just like blocks up because it's too, it's too much for human words. It's too much to explain, but I'm going to try here for a quick second. In all of our seasons, in all of our essences and embodiments, in all of our phases, our chapters, and our points of view on the planet, you can always double lens it through something else. 
that's that kaleidoscope nature I'm talking about. So for me, I am currently fully in my mother state. I am loving being in this, this new chapter of life for myself that I only entered recently in the last two years. And moving through that mother state, there are times where I still grieve a little part of myself that was the maiden. I grieve the little part of myself that was that bright eyed, bushy tailed girl walking through the world. And like it, the whole world was my oyster. I could try anything. I could do anything. Life was this grand adventure. And now I do feel like I've stepped into the care, nurture, teach state of my life where I want to be more grounded, where I want to root and really build a life. However, there is this little piece of joy that comes from reminding myself that even in the mother state, I can still be that bright eyed, bushy tailed version of myself for a season or introduce or reignite that part of myself to look at the world in a new way, to learn something new, to revamp myself, try something new, go on an adventure. Like these are the ways that, again, the natural cycles of life, the natural cycles of the world give us these beautiful opportunities to harness the energies that are naturally happening around us and work with them in our own lives. And that feels very full circle for our talk today. So I'm going to leave it there, but happy spring equinox, everyone. I am cheersing you I have barely touched my latte, so I'm going to drink. It's probably a nice latte now. Perfect. Cheersing you a big bumblebee cup full of cold, but I'm going to put some ice in it, hazelnut coffee. I'm actually doing a full spring cleaning series on my vlog channel. So if that's something that interests you, then you can just type in my name on YouTube. Find my vlog channel. It's it's Kaylin, K-A-L-Y-N but my last name Nicholson is the channel. It always feels really weird. Say, one, saying your own name out loud, but two, I, I always assume most people found my podcast by knowing that channel first, but it's been a few years. I've, I'm quite old on the internet, in, 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 in internet years, let me, anyway. But that's a really fun series I've been working on. I'm two, two videos in, although I believe only one has gone out by this point, um, but I've each section of my house and each project, that each vlog is gonna have a spring cleaned, room and a spring project. So, so far I did my gardening, the gardening I was talking about that I did a couple days ago where I just got my first sprouts. I vlogged that, that's in part one. And doing my front foyer where I told you I'm gonna make a wreath and do the hunter boot part planters. Those will be in part two, but the spring cleaning of the front foyer was in part one. So if you're looking for some actual physical spring cleaning energy motivation, definitely go check that out. But this was hopefully that chat that got you more into the essence of the spring equinox. Let me know if you're doing anything else. I know I've asked a lot, a lot of let me knows in this chat, but what are you doing for the spring equinox? Anything fun? Are you gonna light some candles? Are you spring cleaning? Are you gonna do a burning ritual? That's what I'm gonna try and do on the spring equinox is get Ryan to start a fire outside and burn up a bunch of papers that I did when I spring cleaned my office. Uh, and just, yeah, go through some clothes and just, just really get that. I'm harnessing the energy of spring this year. I'm ready. I hope you guys are feeling ready too. So happy spring. And I will chat with all of you guys in the next one. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.